This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is a Jubilee Sunday, a Sunday when we have made an extra emphasis on uh, welcoming people and getting folks to be here in person if you're able or to be worshiping in real time if you're worshiping online so that we can have more opportunities to connect with one another and get to know one another. So hopefully you've met someone new this morning and it's my joy to welcome all of you into this hour of worship together. I'd like to invite you to register your attendance. If you are here in the sanctuary, there are registration pads at the end of each row. If you'll sign those and pass them down the row and back again. And if you're worshiping online, if you could uh, click the link that's there in the chat, that will give us a chance to know that you're with us this morning and hope that you meet someone new in the online congregation this morning. We have uh, downstairs going on, downstairs in the gym, um, since 9.30, our engagement party, which is sort of our ministry fair. Our lay leadership team gave it a fun name this year. And hopefully many of you have already been down there. We have 35 plus tables of the various Sunday school classes, ministries, outreach opportunities, committees, ways that you can connect and serve in and through this congregation. And it will be going on until 12.30, so I promise Worship won't go long this morning uh, to give you a chance to go down there and check some of those things out if you haven't been yet. One of the things that I would invite you to do if you go down to the engagement party is to look for the lay leadership table. If you walk into the gym, it's kind of on the left on the far wall. On that table is a card that we are asking people to sign for our bishop, Bill McAlilly. Um, he was in a car accident on Thursday, had several broken bones and fractures, and he had surgery on Friday. He's expected to fully recover, but um, he's in some pain, and we want to be in prayer for him and his complete healing. So we want him to know that the West End congregation is holding him in prayer. Some other announcements as we prepare to leap into the next week. Our college students are invited to lunch after this worship service. This will be pretty much every week throughout the semester. After this service at noon, if you will meet in the back of the sanctuary, what we call the narthex, um, then you can go to lunch together um, after the service. And spread the word. We'd love for, to have more students join us. Tonight from 5 to 7, uh, there's, uh, our older elementary fellowship will gather for its kickoff meeting this fall down in McCorder Hall. Um, from, that's fourth through sixth graders. And then at the same time, 5 to 7, our youth will be gathering upstairs in the youth area, seventh graders through twelfth graders. So the building will be full of lots of good energy as we get those ministries started for the fall. Wednesday night was wonderful this past week. Um, we've started up our Wednesday night suppers again for the first time since COVID. We had a great turnout, multi-generational, lots of new friends to meet. Um, and children's choirs have started. And this week we will launch the new Encounter Worship Service. So there's more information in your bulletin and you can sign up for dinner uh, through the link that's there. Finally, if you've been worshiping with us and perhaps uh, praying about becoming an official member of the church and making this your church home, we have a new member class that will start on September 11th. 
four weeks during the Sunday school hour, so 945 downstairs in McCorder, our fellowship hall. And we would encourage you to, to join us there for those four weeks. We are grateful today for our brass ensemble that is helping uh, lift our voices in worship this morning. The organ is still a work in progress, um, but we are on it and we're this close. So we're grateful that they are here to help us lift our voices in praise to God. And now it is time for us to do just that. All uh-huh. right. 
God created us, called us to hospitality. Let us give generously to others as God has given us. May our lives be a sacrifice of praise. May our worship be joy Let us come down before God with our confessions, with the assurance that who we are and what we carry are held within the God of perfect love, who knows us intimately, who cares for us deeply, and whose compassion and mercy have no end. God, our helper, we confess that we have praised you with our lips and not with our lives. We are not welcome others as we, as we have commanded us. We have avoided strangers and forgotten the plight of those who suffer. We have not honored our gifts. We are also in the, 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 the Forgive us, steadfast God, and guide us to amend our ways. Help us to follow your example of compassion and generosity, that we may bring you to build the world. And in doing so, and now, God, we offer you our individual confessions in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us exchange signs of reconciliation and love in whatever way you feel comfortable. The peace of Christ be with you. One of the greatest joys of church is baptism of children. This morning, Jennifer and Justin Burkmeyer bring their daughter to God before the community of faith for baptism. My family in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Jennifer and Justin, I ask you on behalf of the whole church and in the presence of God and this congregation, these ancient questions of the faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people? If so, say, I do. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. I will. And my friends in the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, 
reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say, we do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with the community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in service with others. We will pray for her to be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this child who receives it, to wash away sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. And what name have you given your daughter? June Courier. June Courier. I baptize you in the name of God, the Father who created you, Christ, the Son who redeems you, and the Holy Spirit who will live within you and comfort and advocate for you all the days of your life. Now, June, we're going to come up this way so your parents and your godparents can all lay a hand on you and together we can pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. June Courier, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your beautiful life. Amen. All right, June, I'm going to take you on a little walk. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. You should have seen her. She was clapping and dancing at the opening hymn. You are ready for church. And this is your church family, and they are ready for you. In just a minute, they're going to make some promises to you to help you learn all about God's love and to show you what it looks like to follow Jesus and to make sure you know that you are loved beyond measure and you always will be. So let's listen real carefully while they make that promise to us. To Will the congregation please stand and face June Courier? Now is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Members of this household of God, I recommend June Courier to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. As members with you, you,
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The lesson from the New Testament is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 6 and 15 and 16. Escuchen la lectura. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do for me? Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. La palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. The word of God for the people of God. Gracias, damos a Dios. to have a moment with any children who are here in the sanctuary. If you would come up and join me here. And if you're worshiping with us online, just move a little closer to your screens for a special moment together. Good to see you. Let's see. Welcome, welcome. Big thanks to our acolytes this morning. Great. Okay, I am going to invite you all to, if you were here last week, you know we stood up and we did something over there. We're going to stand up again this morning, and I want you to stand in a circle. It's best just a sort of a circle, as best we can, we can, whoopsie, bonk. You okay? Okay, let's come up in a circle. Can make sure we have room for everybody. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to imagine, come on and join us. You want to come up here? Just join the circle right here. That this is our church family. These are people who we know and we love and we love being together and we have fun together in Sunday school and the church picnic and the sounds game and all these things that we do together. We take care of each other. When someone's hurt, we can go and be with them and help. We just love each other so much. And this, this is just what churches ought, ought to be, right? We're people who just love each other like family. But wait a minute. Look at there's Pastor Brandon over there. He's all by himself. He's not part of the circle. He's not part of the church family. What should we do, do you think? Should we make room for him? Yeah, let's invite him. Would you, would you go, go, go get him? Eva, you want to go get him? Or, our acolyte knows what to do. <laughs> Look at that. She went and got him, and now he's part of our circle, and we can say, yay, welcome, Brandon. Isn't that wonderful? And that's also what we're supposed to do as a church. Yes, we're supposed to love each other and know each other. We're always supposed to be looking out. If there's somebody new or a stranger we don't know who may be by themselves, we want to bring them in too and make them feel welcome. And you all are especially good at that. So be on the lookout and always be ready to make a new friend. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for our church family 
for a place we can come and people we can be with who know us by name and who love us and care for us and who we can love and care for in return. Help us always to be open and ready to welcome new people, to reach out in love, especially to meet people who might be lonely or might need a friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much. So if you are three, four, or five, you can go with Pastor Maggie and Pastor Francis to Children's Church. And if you're older than that, you can go back and sit with friends and family. Thank you all for being willing to stand in a circle. Raise your hand if you have ever heard a pastor say these words. I'm sorry that my sermon was so short. <laughs> anybody, anybody ever heard that? Yeah, I've never heard anybody complain that a sermon was too short. We all like short sermons, right? Well, at the end of Hebrews, which we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks, if you're just joining us this week, We've talked about how the book of Hebrews really is more of a sermon than anything else. It is a word of exhortation that a preacher is offering to a congregation that he has known and loved. And as his sermon comes to an end, he apologizes that it's been so brief. If I were to stand up here and read the book of Hebrews out loud, you might think that is not a short sermon. But for them, perhaps it was brief and certainly from his perspective, he felt like he hadn't perhaps said enough because he knows their state of mind. He knows their state of heart. As we've talked about over the past couple of weeks, this pastor knows that this congregation is tired. They are hurting and struggling. There are some among them who have been taken to prison, who have been tortured for their faith. There are others who perhaps haven't suffered in that way, but they've all continued to try and follow the way of Jesus, the way of love and mercy in a world of empire that does not recognize or appreciate the ways of Jesus. And they're getting tired, and they're losing faith. And so he offers them this word of exhortation as a way of saying, keep the faith. And as we've talked about over the past couple of weeks, he has different ways of doing that. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at chapter 11, where he gives all these examples of their ancestors in the faith. Remember the faith of Abraham and Sarah and Moses and Barak and Rahab and all these who've gone before. How they kept the faith. They put one foot in front of the other. They trusted in the promises of God, even though they didn't see those promises completely fulfilled before they died. They kept running the race. Then last week we looked at how he exhorted them, how he encouraged them by saying, look to Jesus. Look to the example of Jesus and all that he endured and all that he suffered for the sake of love, for the sake of the world, for the sake of the joy that was to come. And so this week, this wonderful, resounding sermon begins to come to a close. I think the part we heard last week, if you were here, was really the climax of the sermon. After he had gone through the catalog of all the saints, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us keep running the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. And so now he's giving them some concluding thoughts. It's a little bit like a sermon that says, well, one more thing. Finally, 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 and finally in conclusion. Just a few more thoughts, just a few more reminders of how to keep the faith. Because ultimately, keeping the faith is not about holding on to your set of beliefs or just assenting to a particular theology. From his perspective, keeping the faith means living the faith. Live it out every day in every aspect of your lives. And so he gives them this little list, sort of like bullet points, of how to do that and what that looks like. So we're going to walk around in this part of the sermon this morning and, and see if his teachings from 2,000 years ago might have some instructions for us in our daily living. Keep the faith, he is saying to them. 
And he begins by saying, let mutual love continue. Love one another like family. I don't know for sure, but I think it was a pretty radical thing that the early Christian community called each other siblings, brothers and sisters. See yourselves in this congregation as a family. Love one another as Christ has loved you. Reaching across all the kinds of divisions and barriers and labels that the world might put on you and love one another with mutual affection. Take care of each other. Make sure there is not a needy one among you. And we see examples in the book of Acts of how they lived that out and taking care of the widows and the orphans and, and sharing their possessions and caring for one another. We hear accounts from the first century of, of people who looked at the Christian communities and said, see how they love one another. And so we are called to do and to be. And I see it. I see it among you. I see you loving one another and caring for one another. Now, this is a big congregation, and there's no way we can know everybody. But I pray that each and every one of us can find a place to belong, can find a place to be known and called by name and loved and cared for. This past month, I've been teaching the Bible and Spirit Sunday school class, and every Sunday when they gather, they share what's going on in their lives. They talk about who in their class has just had surgery or who's in rehab from a hip replacement or who's lost a loved one. And they make sure that somebody's got food and make sure someone's gotten a phone call and that people feel seen and cared for and known. And that happens in all different kinds of ways in this congregation. And we also need to be better at it. There are times that, that Brandon and I and other pastors find out after the fact that someone has had surgery. And so I'm so glad that there are some of you who are like, I'm sending you this email. You probably know this already. I don't want to be a busybody. But did you know? And sometimes we don't know what's going on in people's lives. So hear this now. One invitation is for you to let us know. Call Erin Racine, send her an email. She keeps track of all of these things in our congregation so we can better care for you and for one another. And set up a meal train and phone calls and love and care so that everybody feels like they're held in love, in mutual love as part of this congregation. Let mutual love continue. Keep on growing in love with one another. The next thing he says, as I tried to illustrate with the children, is also make sure that you're looking outward. Don't be so in love with each other and so insular that you're not open to new people and new ways and new stories. Keep an eye out for the stranger. And of course that's true in the life of a congregation. I'm sure many of you remember the first time you walked into this place not knowing anybody. And what a difference it can make if somebody reaches out a hand and welcomes you. And I've heard people say, I'm so afraid I'm going to greet someone and they're going to tell me, oh, I've been a member for 20 years. Well, okay, but now you're new to me, so it's okay to meet and greet one another. And if someone is a stranger to you, to reach out in hospitality to nurture within us a spirit of hospitality where we're open, not just to new people, but to new experiences, to new ways of doing things, to learning things differently. And I think this is something, an invitation that is not just for us as a church, but as we go out in the world, always to be people of hospitality, most especially with those who are on the margins who don't belong anywhere, who feel isolated and lost and lonely, to be those who create a loving space for others. So love, continue loving one another. Offer hospitality to strangers. And it's fascinating that the next thing he says is, remember those in prison as if you yourself were in prison or those who are being tortured as if you yourself were suffering. Now, in one layer, he's probably talking about those fellow Christians who are being imprisoned and persecuted for their faith, 
because it could just as well be any of them. But I think he's also reminding them to remember all those who are in prison, who are suffering, who are being persecuted, as if we ourselves are in their shoes. To have that sense of compassion, rather than saying, Woo, I'm glad that's not me. I'm going to stick to my good life over here with my good people. But to continue to be mindful of the suffering in our community, of where there is hurting, where there is injustice, where there's isolation, and address those people and those issues as if they were our very own, to be people of compassion in the world. Now, it would be fine with me if he would left off there. That is plenty to work on, plenty to focus on, but he moves on, and now he gets to meddling because he goes inside the marriage bed. He says, Honor the marriage covenant. Not only to married people, but to everyone, honor that covenant. And make sure to be faithful in that relationship. And also what I hear in that is be faithful in every one of your closest relationships. In your household, with your children if you have them. With those who you live and work with most closely. Those most intimate relationships. We must be living out the ways of Christ in those relationships as well. Over the years that I've been in ministry, I've had the privilege of sitting down with families and friends as they prepare to celebrate the life of someone they've loved in a funeral or a memorial service. And if I'm giving the homily at one of those services, I try and and listen and collect their stories and do my best to convey, in addition to my own experiences of the person, to convey who they were in the light of God's love and grace. And one of the things that inspires me the most is when I can hear people's children, when I can hear their spouse talk about their goodness and their faithfulness and their loving nature and the way that they treated them at home. I've heard stories of people who have a really good life in public, but at home not so much. And so when I can see these examples of people who had the integrity to walk their faith in the most private places of their lives, they're living out this teaching. And so it challenges me to do my best to be patient kind, gentle, not insist on my own way, all of those things about love that Paul talks about in the first 13th chapter of Corinthians with my husband and my children and my siblings. Okay, he's not done meddling. He's talked about the household. and Now he talks about money. That's the last bullet point that we're going to look at. He says, be sure and guard against the love of money and be content with what you have. Wow. That's an instruction I could chew on and live with for a long, that's a lifelong process to learn to be content with what we have, especially in this world that we live in that sows within us constantly this creating these needs we didn't even know we had. I mean, I, I don't know what the purple pill is, but I think I need it. I mean, how many of you are doctors and you have people asking you about the purple pill? Because some commercial has said, ask your doctor about the purple pill. Or suddenly we feel like, we, I need an instant pot because, yeah, gee, isn't that cool? Our culture does that. It creates this sense of discontent. Like if I don't quite have enough, if I just had that one more thing, or if I just earned this much more money, if it just had one more bedroom in my apartment, or... And yet this spiritual teacher says, be content with what you have. What a radical witness it can be in the world if we as the people of God can say, I have enough. And this word content that he uses literally is anti-covetousness, anti-greed. So taking an active, intentional role, practice of being content. 
making it a priority to practice contentment and gratitude. Well, there are other verses in this text that we didn't get to hear. It's a long list, but I don't know about you, that's plenty for me to chew on and to work on. But the beautiful thing about this sermon as he wraps it up is he reminds us that this is all a process of grace. He says, faith is not a checklist and a set of rules that we obey in order to earn God's favor. No, remember that your hearts are steeped in the grace of God, and it is through that grace that God continues to work on us and help us be content and help us be faithful. And we're not always going to be perfect. We're not always going to get it right. But it's a journey. Every verb that he uses is a continue to love one another, Keep on remembering. The, the verb tense is like, what I don't remember my verb tenses in Greek, but keep on doing what you're doing. Keep at it. Keep the journey going. And as he brings the sermon to a close, in his benediction, he says, May the God of peace move you toward completion, move you toward wholeness, move you toward that integrity of life that is grounded in God's grace. It is a journey, my friends, and I am so grateful for the journey, for the grace that accompanies us on it, and most especially for your companionship. Thanks be to God. As people on the journey and grounded in God's grace, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join our voices together for our affirmation of faith found on 883 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer, I invite you to lift up both your silent and spoken prayers. If you would like to share prayer concerns with our pastoral team so that we might pray for them throughout the week, you may do that in several ways. If you're worshiping with us online, you may follow the link on our website under Contact Us, and you can find a place to leave prayer concerns there, and anyone can do that. But also, if you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary, you can find one of the cray cards that's located in the pew racks in front of you, and you may write your prayer concern on there and then place it in the offering plates as they make their way through the pews in a few moments. This morning, we have a beautiful rose on the communion table, and that is to celebrate the birth of Jack Charles Whipple, who was born August 17th to Matt and Amanda Whipple. We also have uh, prayers of sympathy to offer to several families this week. First of all, we remember the family of longtime West End member Sarah Frost Stamps, who passed away on August 21st. Services were held Wednesday at West End, and she is survived by a great number of West End members, daughters Sally Swore and Mary Gamble and Martha Stamps, sons-in-law Sammy Swore and Tom Gamble, and grandchildren Richard Swore, Keith Gamble, Phelps Gamble, Mariah Williams, Sadie Reed, and John Mark Reed. We also pray for the family of Dave Mullendor, who passed away on August 23rd. A memorial service is planned for Saturday, September 10th at 1130 a.m. here in the West End Sanctuary. Visitation will be in Reed Hall and will precede the service beginning at 10 a.m. Among his survivors are his wife, Karen Mullendor, and their son, Ames Mullendor. We also pray for Jane Hamm and her family who are mourning the death of her brother, Harry Courtney Tuttle, who passed away on August 17th. Services will be held in Pensacola, Florida on August 30th. And finally, we continue to pray for our bishop, Bill McAlilly, who oversees our annual conference, the Tennessee Western Kentucky Conference. Bishop McAlilly was in a car accident on Thursday, August 25th on I-24 and he suffered multiple fractures and an ankle injury. He had successful surgery on Friday to make repairs, and he is now in recovery. His family appreciates our ongoing prayers, and we pray for peace and healing in the coming days and weeks. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of mutual love and grace, you surround us with your warmly embracing spirit. You guide our lives so that they are patterned after your ways. We pray that you would keep us focused on you. Help us remember that our actions toward others and our relationships with others can be filled with the same mutual love and grace that you share with us. God, you never leave us and you never forsake us. Make us people who never forsake you either. Strengthen our desire and commitment to be people of your way. Lord, you are our helper and we will not be afraid. We pray fearlessly and boldly this day for the things that we hope, the things that we lament, and the things with which we struggle. We pray for those near and far who need to sense your presence this day. We lift to you those persons and places and spaces that are on our hearts and minds. And we also lift ourselves up as persons in need of your care and compassion. No matter what is happening in our lives right now, we trust that you are with us. Help us lean into this truth each and every day. Help us trust that you hold us securely in all things. Lord Jesus Christ, we lift our prayers in your name, knowing that our petitions for hope and healing and wholeness are the sweetest offering you could receive. So now, hear our souls sing our prayers and petitions as we enter a moment of silent prayer.
And now, with the confidence of those who have been saved from our own frailty and fear, we join our voices together to pray as Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to give our tithes and offerings, we recognize that everyone has a different financial situation so that we might continue our vital ministries here in our community and throughout the world, we invite you simply to give as you are able and as you feel led. For those of you worshiping with us online, you are welcome to give via the options listed on the screen or in the chat. And of course, those of you here may use the offering plates. Let us offer our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, and our hearts to God who loves us unconditionally.
I'm sorry that my sermon was not brief, but I will invite us all to hear the final words of the ancient preacher, the writer of Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.